What's up everybody? Welcome back to Slick Nick's Garage. Quick video for you today. I uh, wanted to talk about replacing the inner cartridge seals on twin chamber forks. Um, there wasn't a lot of videos that I found out there on YouTube that kind of really detailed the process and it is a, a wear item on a lot of twin chamber forks. So, um, you know, if you can do this yourself, you could save a lot of time uh, and money as well. So um, the seals are readily available, pretty cheap. Um, what I've got here is a set of uh, Showa 47 millimeter twin chamber forks off of a KX250F. Um, so I've got them broken down, everything is cleaned, and I just wanted to detail the process for you a little bit. Um, now inside the uh, twin chamber forks, there's two seals. There's one at the bottom here, and there's one at the top, um, actually on the base valve piston. So I'll get into replacing this one in a uh, second part of the video. But for now, we'll talk about replacing the lower cartridge seal. So I'm not gonna detail how to remove the cartridge. There's thousands of videos out there on how to do that, but you're gonna wanna remove your cartridge. I've got mine mounted here in a set of uh, soft jaws and the vise is very lightly mounted. You don't wanna crush this tube at all. And uh, the base valve is removed and uh, this one's been cleaned in the solvent tank, but you're gonna wanna let all your oil drain out um, if you can. Now, um, you're gonna also wanna remove your um, uh, cartridge rod, which I've already done here. So this is what will have your rebound piston and mid valve on it. Lots of videos on that too. Basically, um, you're just gonna remove your lock nut here from the shaft. Um, it'll be sticking out and then lube up the threads with some grease um, on reinstallation. If you're replacing the seal, it's not a big deal if you rip it anyways, but once you remove that lock nut, the uh, entire shaft will just slide right out. So now that we've got that broken down, we're left with this. Now. Um, these forks have been taken apart before. Um, I've already serviced these. So you can see that these holes here have been drilled out previously. But if your forks are stock, you're just gonna have four peening marks around the outside like that. What you have to do is drill those out, but you're not gonna drill all the way through into the actual um, seal holding assembly here. So I've got a, um, another cartridge here that's already been drilled. So I just wanna show you how thick that is. So that's all you want to drill through is just that outer layer. So it's about a, you know, 16th or 32nd of an inch or, you know, a couple of millimeters for us metric folk. So once you get that drilled out, um, again, you're not going to want to go all the way through. So just get that drilled out. There's four peenings around there. You're going to want to um, heat this up. Now, you don't want to get so, so hot that you melt the O-ring inside, but they're... Um, I don't know if it's a factory Loctite or a glue, but I find it really helps to heat these up in order to get this out. Then if you look in the end here, you'll see there's a, a hex socket. So what I use is just a, um, I just got a, a whole set of these real cheap at uh, Princess Auto here in Canada, which is like our Harbor Freight. And uh, they just fit right in the end here. This is a metric, um, this one's a 17 millimeter. Now, if you don't have one of these sockets, you can make do in a pinch with a 17 millimeter bolt. You can put the bolt in there and then weld a nut on the end and kind of use that with a, with a socket if need be. Now, this one's already been removed, so um, it's gonna be really easy for me, but you're gonna wanna heat this up and that's gonna expand the outer tube. And once you um, get that outer tube expanded, Again, having this held in the soft jaws, you're gonna to wanna to turn your um, uh, uh, ratchet and it'll remove this um, assembly here. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so here's our uh, seal holding assembly removed. Now you can see where I've drilled and you don't wanna go all the way through. So you're just removing those peening marks again. Now, when, uh, like I said before, I've already serviced these forks, so I've already uh, taken the liberty of deburring these, but once you get this out, you're gonna to wanna to deburr both this and the inside of your um, cartridge here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that there's no sharp edges on here. So I just use a piece of emery cloth or you can use some sandpaper. Um, this is really soft aluminum, so um, just be careful with that. Now, there is one piece still in here, which I'm gonna remove. And behind that, you're gonna see a snap ring um, with a spring and um, you don't need to remove any of that. So this is all we're working with here. And uh, this is what you'll be left with. Now I've got another base valve, or not a base valve, sorry, a seal holding assembly here already disassembled so we can see what's inside. So this is how it goes together. On the top here, you're gonna see your um, this circlip and then this is part of your um, uh, bottoming cone assembly. So you don't have to remove these. You can if you want. I just have them removed here for uh, ease of illustration. Here's our seal uh, holding assembly. There's a uh, bushing inside there for your uh, cartridge rods. You're going to want to inspect it. Um, this one's starting to show a little bit of wear. So I believe I'm going to go ahead and, and replace that there. You can see where it's starting to wear. Um, so there's bushing in there. You want to inspect that. On top of the bushing, you're going to have a washer. 
And then this is your lower cartridge seal. So this is the piece that um, uh, will fail if your cartridge is leaking. Now, I got replacements here from Suspension Direct. Here's the part number for the Showa 47 mil forks. Um, so on top of that seal, you're gonna have the, um, uh, it's, I guess it's like a stepped washer, and then the O-ring which mounts on the outside of the assembly here. So that's really all there is to it. It's super simple. So to access this seal, once again, this uh, stepped washer, you know, ours was left inside the uh, cartridge assembly. So that may or may not come out with you, but it's really as simple as removing this. Um, once again, this is the O-ring. You wanna make sure that you don't melt when you're heating up the assembly. And then uh, just use a screwdriver or something, pop your seal out, inspect your bushing, pop your new seal in, and then um, install your stepped uh, washer here. It only goes one way, you can actually feel it. If, if you try and put it in upside down here, it just sort of sits on top. If you put it oriented properly, it actually sits inside and uh, keeps pressure on that seal. So that's really all there is to replacing those seals. Um, when you want to reinstall, um, I'm gonna leave our stepped washer out now just for demonstration, but you're gonna have your stepped washer inside. You're gonna to want to Loctite this, um, obviously, and then you're just gonna to want to put it back in and um, you're gonna to wanna to torque this down. I'll go ahead and put the torques back on the screen. I've gotta look it up, but you're gonna to wanna to torque this down. And then that would be um, the complete replacement of the lower cartridge assembly. So now uh, we can look at replacing the upper seal. All right, so now we're gonna look at replacing the upper inner cartridge seal. So um, you're gonna to wanna to remove your base valve assembly, uh, which we talked about in the lower uh, cartridge seal portion. To do that, I just have a couple of wrenches that I got here from Rocky Mountain. Um, this wrench actually works on both the inner and the outer portion of the cartridge, but I like to have the two wrenches so that I'll use uh, this one on the uh, outside hex portion, and then I'll use this on the uh, inside portion here. This one also doubles as a cartridge rod holding tool. So once you get your base valve out, you're gonna be left with this. Now I've removed the compression valve assembly and compression piston from the bottom of this because I'm gonna be revalving these forks for motocross. They were previously set up for woods riding, but you will probably have your uh, compression base valve assembly still on here. If you wanna go ahead and remove that for valving, um, there's lots of videos on how to do so. You'll need to grind the pin off the end here, but I won't cover that here. So this is what you'll be left with. Uh, I've previously loosened this, but we'll go ahead and break it down here uh, so that you can see how to replace this seal. The seal is actually located in the bottom of this piston assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it started by mounting it in a set of soft jaws here. And just really lightly tighten that down. All right, so you're gonna have this jam nut here, which is a 12 millimeter, I believe, is gonna be backed up against the cap. So they do make a special thin wrench that gets in between the springs here. Uh, I find just using an old um, wrench and you can grind it down on a grinding wheel if need be, but you can usually expand the spring enough to get it in there. So you're gonna wanna loosen that nut and back it down. Then you're gonna wanna use your cap removal tool on top and you're gonna loosen your cap. Now I've already done this one, so I'll just take it off by hand. And the uh, compression adjuster needle will come out with the cap. Now, when you disassemble the forks, you should have already had this compression clicker already backed all the way out, that's important. But if you haven't done that by this point, make sure you've done it before you try to take this apart. So this entire assembly will slide out like that. Next, we're gonna have a washer. You're gonna have your ICS spring. There's gonna be the lock nut. Now this is just an aluminum nut, so be very careful with your wrench. It's very easy to round off. It doesn't need a lot of force on that. And now we're gonna have another washer inside along with our piston, so we'll go ahead and remove that. Once we get our piston off, you can find your upper cartridge seal inside. Now I've already disassembled one of these assemblies so we can have a look here. You've got your O-ring that goes on the outside of the cap. I've actually removed the compression adjuster needle from this. Uh, this cap had a stripped out compression adjuster. So I actually had to machine a new compression adjuster 
and install it in the cap, but yours will stay together with the cap. That's okay. You don't need to remove that. This is just for illustration purposes. This is your compression adjuster needle. So what this uh, will do is actually block off as you turn your compression clicker, this needle will move in or out and actually allow more or less oil to bypass through here, coming out here, bypass your compression shim stack. So that's how your compression clicker works. Inside, we got once again, our washer. This is our uh, cartridge spring. This is what uh, keeps the cartridge pressurized, uh, reduces cavitation, lots of other things. Um, these are actually adjustable. So this was set up for woods before this particular fork. I'm setting it back up for motocross. So I went to a stock rate 1.9 kilogram pressure spring. Another washer, the O-ring that sits on your piston. And then inside your piston here where the seal sits, you're going to have a washer and a circlip. Now, all you need to do is pop out the circlip using a pick remove the washer and this is your upper cartridge seal now i've already replaced this one so i know it's good i don't need to um, replace it again and i'm not going to try and dig it out of there in case i damage it but all you're going to want to do is pull the seal out of there with a uh, pick or a screwdriver or something like that be really careful these are all aluminum components inspect your bushings and pop a new seal in once you've done that you're good to reassemble everything now when you do go to reassemble um the cap onto the rod, make sure that you're only putting it on uh, snug with the wrench. You don't want to over tighten it. And again, that's extremely important to have this compression clicker back all the way out so that you don't bottom out on this needle. This is an extremely fragile part and it's very easy to break. So you do not want to break this stuff. These parts are not available from Showa separately. That's why I had to make a new compression clicker. The only way to get any of these components is to buy the complete uh, base valve assembly. So be very careful when you're screwing that back together. Once you've got it lightly bottomed out on the shaft, you're going to want to tighten your lock nut up against it. Again, be very careful. It's an aluminum nut, strips out easily. You just need it snug. There's not a lot of force on these components, okay? So once you get that all back together, assembled in reverse order of removal, of course, using lots of uh, either uh, fork oil or I do like the Racetech seal grease. Uh, it's a really thin grease. It works really well for uh, suspension components on the inside of your seal when you go to reassemble. You're going to want to get all that reassembled and then install your um, assembled base valve back into your cartridge and you're going to fill and bleed it as uh, shown in the service manual. I hope that helps everybody. Uh, really appreciate you watching. One last thing I wanted to mention about reinstalling the rod inside the cartridge. The service manual says to use uh, Teflon tape on the thread so that you don't cut the uh, lower cartridge seal. I really don't like doing that because I find that those little pieces of Teflon as you pass it through the seal can sometimes tear off. I don't know if they're gonna get inside of your, uh, you know, your rebound valve, your mid valve, that kind of thing, plug things up, or they could get stuck and pinched between somewhere. So I've had really good luck just using a thick grease uh, to kind of fill the threads. Make sure that your lower cartridge seal is lubed up well. When you go to slide the rod in, make sure everything's straight and just go through the once. And as long as you do it very carefully, you should have no issues with that. So once again, Thanks for watching. I really hope this uh, helps somebody replace their inner cartridge seal. It's really not a difficult job once you get to uh, see everything apart and kind of see how it goes together. If it seems intimidating to you, just take lots of pictures. Uh, you know, you can pause this video, reference it if you need to. Uh, it's really not that difficult of a job. Save yourself some time, save yourself some money. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.